So at this point, you should have three virtual machines installed in VMware Pro. That would be our first domain controller, which we are using Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center Edition. A second one, also Data Center Edition, as you can see. And then a third one, which is my client. I'm going to use Windows 10. Now, if you want, go ahead and create many clients. It just depends on how much memory you have and how many virtual machines can be supported at once. So the first thing that we need to do, there's a few things we need to do before we can instantiate these virtual machines as domain controllers. Now, we are going to move these over to their own autonomous domain, um, essentially, so that they cannot connect with um, the host operating system, but that they can all communicate. And we'll do that in a subsequent video. But let's go ahead and prepare these for Active Directory. So on my DC1, a couple things that I'm going to need to do. The first is inside my settings before I even boot the machine, I'm going to want to add a hard drive. Okay, so what I do is I come up here to edit virtual machine settings. I want a hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and add a hard drive. Now, uh, SCSI is recommended, and I'm going to leave it as independent disks are not affected by snapshots. I want it to be persistent. Here's the thing. The trouble with snapshots in Active Directory is if we revert back to a snapshot, our two Active Directory domain controllers are going to lose synchronization. We're going to have to reset one and get it to sync back up. So my suggestion is use snapshots sparingly in these, you know, after you install Active Directory. If you want the practice of installing Active Directory, you know, go ahead, create a snapshot, you know, and do it. But make sure that once you've installed Active Directory, you've instantiated both of your domain controllers and your clients, that snapshots uh, not be used. So at that point, anything you do, you want to undo within the operating system. So at this point, SCSI, I'll choose next. Uh, create a new virtual disk, yep. And it doesn't need to be this big. We only need about 10 gigs for the sysfall. So uh, I'm gonna make it 10 gigs. I'm gonna store it as a single file. Um, here is the name it gives, okay, for that disk. And what I'm going to do is right here, this is MMDC right here. Instead of the one, I'm going to call this sysvol. That way I know that it's my system volume for my Active Directory file. So this will be sysvol on one, just in case, you know, I'm looking at files. Notice that's MIIMDC, so sysvol one. I'll say finish, and it has added the disk. Now, we're going to need to go into the operating system and instantiate that disk. I'll go ahead and choose OK. And then I'll pause the video while I do that here. So I'm going to do this on my second domain controller. So as you can see, I've created it. Um, this is my DC2. So I'm going to come in behind here. I'm going to call this sysvol2 for DC2. Finish. And as you can see, I now have my sysvol DC2, my hard disk for 60 gig, my hard disk for 10. That's a dynamically growing hard disk and I'm ready to proceed. So I've got both of those going. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go in and instantiate those disks in the OS. But before I do that, I'm going to turn on the default administrator account that's no longer on by default and make sure that I work in that environment because when I install the Active Directory role, I'm going to want to be in that administrative account. So what I'll do is pause while I open up and log into my domain controllers and show you how to do that. All right, so I am in my two DCs. I'm also going to do the same next process of instantiating that default administrator account back into Windows 10 as well. So I'm going to come in here, start menu, and type in CMD. It's going to bring up my search for command prompt. I'm going to right click, and I am going to run as administrator. So I will um, accept the user access control, and it opens up the command prompt. At this time, I'm going to run the command net user space administrator, making sure I spell it right, space forward slash active colon yes. So that's the command that I want to run. I'll say enter. And if you notice, the command was completed successfully. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, and I'll do it on the other DC as well. So as you can see, I've completed that on both domain controllers. I'm going to go ahead and close the command prompt. Now, 
what I want to make sure is that security wise that I apply a password to that account. So if you notice, I'm going to go into search, search user accounts. Here's my accounts. Let me go ahead and make this bigger here. I'm going to manage another account. Here is my administrator account and I'm going to create a password. So you want to make sure you do this. So uh, I'm going to create a complex password. I'll say create password. I don't need a password hint. And at this point, what I want to do is go ahead and log out of the server. So I can shut down, restart, or you know, simply log out of the server. So I'll sign out. Remember, I was in the eMagatson account. I'm then going to come back in, this time choosing administrator and logging in with the administrative password that I gave it. It'll take a minute to create a profile. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while I do that on the other domain controller. Now, just real quick, notice this uh, error I get. It says, if you do this, administrator will lose the EFS encrypted files, personal certificates, and stored passwords for web. Well, I haven't created any of those, so I'm not worried about that. I am going to go ahead and create the password. So it says it doesn't match. I'll do it again. Pause the video while I... All right, so at this point, as you can see, I'm logged into my Windows 10 machine as administrator. I'm logged in as the administrator on both domain controllers. I'll reinstall the VMware software that it wants to reinstall. That's just silly. I guess I'll have to log back in as administrator. And then, so there's a couple things we're going to do. First of all, we're going to go into disk management. So if I right click on the start menu here and go to disk management, we are going to instantiate those hard drives that we created. So if you notice, it's going to connect. It should find that drive. It's uh, initialized the disk and I'll say OK. If you don't get this, you can right click and initialize as well. So let me go back up here. Here's my disk. I can right click. I've initialized it. If you notice, it's offline. I'm going to bring it back online. Online. It's initialized. I can then right click, create new volume, choose next. I'll want it to be the whole amount. Now I'm going to come up and make this S. S for sysvol is my idea behind that. And so consequently, the volume name will be sysvol. I'll choose next, finish, and it will format. Now at this point, I'll pause while I go in and do the other domain controller. So as you can see, I've done that on my MIIM DC002 virtual machine, and it has completed. So on both machines, I have the disks. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and close that. I've initialized the disks, so we are ready to install the roles. However, what I want to do is make sure that my server names are changed. So I'm going to go into local server, and as you can see, when I install um, a server by default, it gives it this funky computer name. So I'm going to click on that computer name. I am going to give it a computer description, okay, of MIIM. And if you notice, I'm on DC1, so DC0001. This is going to be a domain controller. It'll be my number one domain controller. Whoops, dash domain controller one. Now, this is simply the name that I'm giving it. That's the description. I'm going to come in here and change. This is where I actually change the computer name. So again, this is going to be MIIM, DC for domain controller 0001. No description needed. I'll say OK. It's going to ask me to reboot the system. I'm going to pause and do this on DC2. So as you can see, it's restarting my com both computers. It's what we've done in this video is we've instantiated a new SCSI virtual drive within VMware for our sysvol. We've gone into the, each computer and activated our sysvol disk, giving it the sysvol name. And then finally, we did the administrator account, opening it up by default, and then renaming the computers. So that's it. Next time, we'll go ahead, complete the installation, and add the two roles of domain Active Directory Domain Services Domain Controller to DC0001 and DC0002. 
Now, make sure that you've also gone in and created that, opened up that default administrator account just so you have it in our virtual environment lab to play with. Take care.